From the opening five minutes to the Batmobile chase and the detective scenes, there are many moments in Matt Reeves' The Batman that in my opinion stand out as being classic ones in a comic book film. But after multiple rewatches of the film in IMAX, one scene has stood out to me the most, whether it be because of its reveals, its approach to identity, and moral questioning. The particular scene I'm talking about is the Arkham Prison sequence, where Batman and the Riddler have a face-to-face -face exchange. It's a scene that sets up the third act, but it also serves as a kind of culmination of the first two, one that fully addresses the central themes of Matt Reeves' film and gets to the heart of what both characters are feeling. In this video, I'm going to be discussing why the prison scene in the Batman is a perfect moment for the film and the identity theme that runs throughout. But before I get into it, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content on the Batman, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into the perfect scene from the Batman. Now, I was originally going to do the Batmobile chase as my perfect scene video essay, and it's one to this day that is still my favourite in the film. And while I might do another video discussing the technicality of that particular scene, there was another moment in the film that I think provides for much more of a conversation around the character central events. It's a moment that perfectly encapsulates the theme of identity in this story, and one that deals with the threat of potentially exposing this. I'm speaking of the face-to-face -face Arkham prison scene between Batman and Riddler. Now while the build-up to this moment reminds you of a certain scene from The Dark Knight, where Heath Ledger's Joker plans to get caught, it acts quite differently in the context of this film. Yes, the Riddler wanted to get caught, and planned all along to wipe out Gotham City by causing it to flood, but alongside the impending disaster that refers to the events of Batman Zero Year, it further gets into the mindset of both of the central characters. Paul Dano's Riddler has every reason to think that he and Batman were on a similar page after the early events. The Caped Crusader, a quite damaged early interpretation of the Batman we know, was actually the one who revealed Gotham's corrupt by solving Riddler's clues, and he even brought Carmine Falcone into the light so Edward Nashton could wipe him out. For most of the riddles, he followed exactly what Edward expected, but it's this part of the film where this goes in the opposite direction. It of course takes him longer to solve that final clue about the city's destruction, but primarily, Batman is not on the same page as the Riddler. It's what ultimately separates him from the individual seated on the other side of the mirror. It's the scene that communicates a quite important double meaning, in which to begin with, our vigilante believes that the Riddler has figured out that he's in fact Bruce Wayne. But the second is one which he and the audience soon figures out, and that is the realisation that Riddler actually means that Bruce Wayne was the final piece of Gotham's elite that didn't fall to his plan. While they both may share similar goals in terms of being vigilantes that aim to remove evil from the city, the difference we learn from this scene is that Batman still cares about Gotham, whereas the Riddler is quite happy to see it all be flooded. This is the primary difference between the Dark Knight's interrogation scene and this one. That film's iconic scene, probably one of my favourites of all time, is focused on showing how Batman is continuously a step behind the plan of the Joker. And while the Riddler prison scene does lead into the final step of the villain's destructive plan, it also serves a completely different purpose. The Batman scene isn't an interrogation, it's primarily showing us these two deeply disturbed orphans, separated by a mirror of reflections. They both go completely off the rails during this conversation, and it could have been the moment that Batman becomes just what Riddler expected him to become. And that is like him, 
someone who feels disgusted by Gotham's system and what it has done to the poorest who fall beneath those in power. And Riddler is of course one of those people. Bruce also went through a hard time, but like the Riddler outlined in this scene, his security of wealth and also having people like Alfred to help him through those difficult times gave him the opportunity to be something more than what the Riddler becomes. So this mirror between them starts as a reflection, but by the end of the scene, it also becomes the diversion between them. It's not a hero interrogating a villain, it's an interrogation of the traumatised individuals that align on either side. It's key to note that throughout the Batman, the Riddler goes to the extreme to expose the corruption in Gotham, and while these rich figures drive Edward to utter madness, the Waynes and ultimately Bruce is the example that gives him the most anger and hatred. We fully understand this from the moments where he sends an explosive device to Wayne Manor, and then here in this scene as he stresses on not successfully killing Bruce Wayne. It perfectly portrays the inner anxieties of both of them, with Riddler conveying the jealousy he has towards Bruce's life of privilege, and that his father was one of the reasons for his own mental collapse. And then there's also Bruce, who's not only worried that he knows and might expose his identity, but he's also deeply angered by the fact that he got involved in this whole plan. He did exactly what the Riddler wanted him to do right up until this primary moment, where there becomes a separation between them. And don't get me wrong, a lot of my small gripes with the Batman come in the final 30 minutes that follow this particular scene, but I personally believe that this scene is not the cause of that. This moment fully deals with the identity theme and the reflection of two traumatised orphans on the opposing sides of a mirror that the previous two hours were building towards. It was the step that the film needed to truly give us the differences in motivation and integrally highlight why Batman is different from his orphaned villain. Yes, we all know the difference between them, but in a film where there's numerous moments in which Batman could go off the rails and become exactly what he fights, it is needed as a build up to the heroic moment we see at the end. It's Batman in his early years figuring out what it means to be a true hero, and while he isn't all there yet, he's on the path to becoming something better. This scene is one that truly sets the path in the third act for that to happen because of that separation between him and the Riddler. At the beginning of this scene, the mirror between them is a distorted reflection, but by the end, it's in fact a separation between. And it even acts as a wall that stops Bruce from breaking through and doing something quite violent. Ultimately, this moment is also a great example of two known actors at the top of their games who are brilliant at showcasing the duality between the two main characters. From Paul Dano's horrifying screams to Robert Pattinson's more calculated, quiet, reserved responses, you get into the mindset of both of them. In fact, I'd argue that it's the best scene at showing exactly what Matt Reeves and the actor wanted to accomplish with this Batman film. They stated that they wanted to make Bruce Wayne and Batman more aligned, and that you can see more of the emotion he feels while he wears the cow. I think it's the best we've ever seen of that in a Batman film, and this is the moment I turn to the most. Just through the eyes of his character, we get a sense of everything he is feeling. The way his performance conveys the fear when he thought Riddler knew who he was, was something you needed so that you can see all of those emotions play out. It's a moment where all of the power behind the cow diminishes, and it's a part of the transition he takes into the hero that Batman can be. And had either of them gone a little deeper, the movie could have ended in a completely different way than what we saw play out. In my opinion, I think it's clear that Riddler doesn't know that Bruce Wayne is Batman for these very reasons. It would remove the purpose of this scene, and alongside this, the whole belief that Riddler follows in this film would have collapsed if he knew that the person he kind of worshipped was the same person he hated the most. There's also the greater idea of arrogance that he doesn't quite understand who stands before him. And all of this plays out as it should if you consider the events of the previous two acts. Also, what aids the effect of this scene is the filmmaking that's used to convey the kinds of things I've talked about. 
We get mainly close-ups of Batman's face and the Riddler's throughout the majority of this scene. That is broken in a brief moment where Bruce looks at a camera in the corner of the cell because he's worried that those outside will receive what Riddler is saying. Of course, if he truly believes it. Obviously, he doesn't, but just through the camera work, the audience is made to feel just as worried as Batman is in these moments. In some of the shots, we also see the reflection of them placed on the other person behind the mirror, and that does a solid job in portraying that mirrored orphan idea I talked about before. And the music and sound in this scene only adds to the tension as it builds and builds. It rises even further as the Riddler goes off on a manic scream, and also when Bruce repeatedly hits the glass, finding out that Riddler's plan has only just begun. Overall, it acts as a scene that truly gets to what this film explored. The idea that both of these orphans are damaged, but ones that have gone through a differing sense and scale of trauma to the other. Riddler was extremely traumatised in the orphanage growing up that linked to the underservice of Thomas Wayne. He feels anger towards the Waynes, tries to uncover the corruption and present it to the city in a quite hateful way by the end. But his hope that another traumatised vigilante will help him is something he didn't fully realise. Bruce is a traumatised individual, but he's one that had the benefit of being able to pull himself together and do good for the city. They are two orphans who reflect each other, yet they completely move away once they get closer in this scene and realise their separating motives. But that was my video discussing one of my favourite scenes from Matt Reeves' The Batman. It's one which, like I said, deals with the reflections of two vigilantes, one that eventually decides to become a beacon of hope for Gotham, and another who's been pushed further and further into madness by Gotham's corrupt. It fully explores the moral ideals of what it means to be a vigilante, but then also shows us what can happen when someone is pushed the wrong way and becomes more aligned with revenge. Riddler uses the idea of orphans and, in particular, the story of Bruce Wayne to especially highlight this theme, and it captures exactly what the film is challenging. The tense filmmaking only elevates that, and this is a moment that has only got better and better for me the more I've rewatched it. Of course, we all have different opinions on the conclusion that follows this, but I think it does work decently in a follow-up to the events of this scene. But I understand many may feel differently and may have another perfect scene in mind, so let me know down below in the comment section what you think towards the prison sequence, alongside what your favourite scene is from Matt Reeves' film. For more breakdown videos on Matt Reeves' The Batman, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.